Hi. In this third and final lesson on gas laws, we're going to look at Charles's law. So we have done Boyle's law, we have done Gay-Lussac's law, and now Charles's law. And uh, so let's go ahead, look at the learning intentions. Again, as before, this is becoming all very samey, but 16.11, uh, I can describe an experiment to verify Charles's law, which is dealing with volume and temperature. Uh, and so, as before, we are only looking at two of them individually. Uh, in the first two, we kept, well, in the first one, we kept temperature constant, then we kept volume constant, and this time we're going to keep pressure constant. Uh, and we're looking here, uh, this uh, is the equation that we're going to be studying or we're going to be quantifying later on. Okay, so here in uh, the virtual physics we have uh, an experiment set up. This is for Charles's law. Uh, and what we're going to do is as we increase the temperature, uh, we're going to see what happens to the volume, but we're going to ensure that the pressure remains constant at all times. And so as we increase the temperature, and if you remember, we're going we're gonna to look at this in, in two ways. We're going to qualitatively describe in terms of kinetic theory and what's happening in this experiment. And then we're going to quantitatively describe using experimental data uh, <coughs> to come up with an equation. So for the kinetic theory of this, as you increase the temperature, you will increase the kinetic energy of the particles. As you increase the kinetic energy of the particles, they're going to move faster and therefore hit the container walls harder and more often. But wait a minute, is this not going to increase the pressure? Well, yes, but in order to maintain the same pressure, we're going to need to give them a bigger area to move in or a bigger volume to move in and therefore, the collisions will not be as often. So even though the kinetic energy of the particles is increasing, because they have more space to move in, the collisions are not going to be as often. Now remember, because they're moving faster, when they do strike the container walls, they're going to hit even harder. And so we're going to have to account for all of that as well. But as you see, when we increase the temperature, the particles are speeding up, but because we're giving a larger area for them to move in or a larger volume for them to move in, the collisions that they're making are not as, as great as when they, 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 when, they, they, when they were moving slower. Okay, so let's just see. So there we go. We can see them moving slower. Same number of collisions. There'll be less collisions now than there were uh, when it was down at minus 10 because they're traveling faster. They've got more kinetic energy. Okay, so we will go and we'll go back and look at the spreadsheet uh, where we have some recorded data from last year. Okay, so uh, again, uh, temperature, we're taking every 10 degrees from 20 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees. And we're measuring our volume. We have uh, millimeters cubed. So, <clears throat> first thing, as always, we're going to plot a graph, uh, and we'll just capture both of those columns. We'll insert the chart in, and again, as before, although in the video I've not specifically shown you how to do this in the help video. Um, it's you follow the same steps as you would uh, doing Ely Sachs law. Uh, we're essentially going to do the same thing. <clears throat> so here we have a relationship. It's not much of a relationship at all. Uh, we are only we only have. Uh, an intersection up here, which is no use, if we set to zero, that's no use at all. So, 
Again, as before, if we take it back to minus 300, then we're going to see we get an intersect here. And I think, as I'm now being smart about this, I'm going to do it as a minus 273 and see where we get to. And so looking at that, like, that looks pretty dead on. Um, so. so as before, um, if we extrapolate our line of best fit back down uh, to where it cuts the x-axis, um, at that point we will be able to determine our, or be able to get a directly proportional relationship um, between volume and temperature and that is that as you increase temperature you'll increase volume so if you double the temperature you double the volume but only if that temperature has been recorded or measured in Kelvin um, and so as before let's uh, take this get a new table And we can insert a new graph. That looks pretty good there. Okay, so that is our graph for Charles's Law. Um, again, if we're going to be really hypercritical, we can see that our best fit line does not 100% intersect with the origin here. And so if we were making a conclusion about this in a formal write-up, we would not be able to say that volume is directly proportional to temperature in Kelvin, uh, but just proportional. Um, we could then explain this in a number of ways, uh, but it would be due to some sort of experimental error. Um, and then we would go on to say, well, actually, we know that it should, that volume and temperature should be um, direct proportional to each other. So as before, we will go and look at the course notes uh, to see the maths involved. And so in the course notes, page 19, we're going to go all the way to the bottom there and again we're going to have our new line of a graph which is at minus 273 degrees Celsius but that's zero Kelvin um, forms our new axis and we see that that is directly proportional. We're going to say that volume is directly proportional to the temperature as long as it's measured in Kelvin. Uh, that would be volume is equal to a constant times temperature me measured in Kelvin, and then rearrangement will have V over T in K is equal to K. Okay. So I'm hoping that this is starting to become quite familiar to you. Uh, we've done two of these already, two different uh, laws, and, and they're all the same, although they have different variables involved in them. The, Procedure for solving the problems is exactly the same. So here we have, we'll just do example one. Okay, so what we have is uh, two containers or the same container uh, and it contains 10 litres of gas uh, and that gas is at 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, what would be the volume of gas if that was heated up to 40 degrees Celsius. Um, 
Now, here's a, an interesting point to note that you look at this and you say, well, you're doubling the temperature. If you're doubling the temperature, then do you not double the volume? Um, and indeed, I've seen numerous multiple choice questions that, that are like this. But what, you're actually, what you actually have to remember is that you're not actually doubling the temperature because 20 degrees C to 40 degrees C is not a doubling of temperature. If you remember, then temperature must be measured in Kelvin, and so temperature is equal to 20 degrees C, which would equal 293 Kelvin. And similarly, the temperature here, which is 40 degrees C, and that would be 313 Kelvin. And so, although you think, yeah, that's double the temperature, it's not actually. This is not double the temperature. Doubling this temperature would be 586, I think, yeah, 586 um, Kelvin, but it's certainly not 313. So you've got to be careful with this. <clears throat> so we would have temperature 1, temperature 2, and then we're going to have volume 1, volume 2, which is a question mark. This is going to be 10 litres. Again, you don't need to worry about the unit conversion here. We just know that if this is 10 litres, then our answer is going to be in litres as well. So our formula, we're going to have V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Again, we can put our numbers in and, and work it out from there, or we can rearrange. Now here we're looking for V2, so I'm going to keep it on its own and on the top. It's already on the top. I'm going to move T2 across up here. So we'll have V2 is equal to V1, T2 over T1. Make my substitution now. V1, 10 times T2, which is 313 over 293. And that's going to give me a volume of 10.7 litres. So an increase of volume of 0 0.7 litres. Okay, uh, well that will be enough for this one. And uh, again, there will be the corresponding worked examples uh, in the course notes. And that starts on page 20 there. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.